Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to be talking about 5 volt standby voltages on power supplies. <clears throat> Here is a DynaPower USA ADW500 peak load 500 watt power supply I just recapped. It's got some Rubicon capacitors in it. I've replaced the capacitors on a 3.3 volt rail, the 5 volt rail, the 12 volt rail, and the 5 volt standby rail. And these Rubicons are actually pulled off of the non-working motherboard, so they're not that old, actually. And I think they're Rubicon MBZs. I'm not sure if that's the series on them or not, but um, I'm going to show you guys an example of good, stable 5-volt standby regulation. Here's my multimeter. And I want to show you guys an issue. Well, this, actually, it's not, it's not with this power supply. It's right, it's with this Antec. But... This power supply here has good 5 volt standby regulation. The issues with some power supplies is um, when you go to power them on, when you first supply power to them from the wall, some power supplies are bad at going way out of spec, way above spec, and frying stuff. Not necessarily frying stuff all the time, but the best Tech HX 2 b 12 e model power supplies are very bad at doing this. But um, some power supplies will go out of spec when you first plug them in and I'm going to go ahead and cut this I'm going to touch this lead here there's a purple wire on the main connector to show you the 5 volt standby voltage now power supplies do tend to regulate themselves a little better when they have a load on and of course this power supply is plugged in I just I just replaced the caps on it's actually out here in the back porch I did a back porch test with any kind of electronic after I replace capacitors or something because if there's a short I'd rather it smoke and do stuff outside not inside the house so anyways cut this power supply off you know what I was saying is like the power supplies will tend to regulate themselves a little bit, little bit better when there's a, an attached load when there's not much of a load sometimes they cannot regulate themselves very well so now as you see the voltage is, has gone back down it's at 0.23 as the capacitors are still slowly discharging. I'm going to flip the switch and turn the power supply back on. Of course, it's not going to run, it's just going to get AC power. Right back to 5.11 volts. No overshoot at all, it just went straight to 5.11 volts. And it's staying right there. Well, 5.12, it just really depends. So, this power supply here, I mean, I've talked a lot of good about it. It's built very well. It's only a $25 power supply for new egg. The only issue with it is it comes with crap capacitors from JEE. And of course after replacing the capacitors this power supply is doing very well. This is the second one I've recapped. The other one's in the Black Max. We're still getting a solid 5.11 volts. Okay now onto the Antec. Alright, now I have the Antec power supply plugged in but not turned on. The switch is turned off on it. And I got the multimeter hooked up. And let's go ahead and see how this one regulates when we plug it in. Okay. And touch positive side this multimeter to the purple lead on the main connector and I'm going to flip the switch on the power supply. Three, two, one. Six point three. Slowly counting down. This Antec kind of reminds me of a Bastec HX 2512E. It says 6.1. I'm going to cut it off. I don't need to be running it like that for long because it can damage the um, ICs in it, particularly the, the controller circuit, that kind of stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bridge the green and black wires on the main connector just to tell it to turn on, tell the power supply to come on. Then we'll have a look at the 5 volt standby voltage. Which surprisingly, this. The motherboard that this power supply came from works just fine, so luckily it didn't fry any motherboards. 
and of course this Antec power supply. I've been in it once already. Replaced a couple of blown Fuju capacitors, but I think we got some more Fuju's on the 5 volt standby circuit that are causing problems here. Now we're going to touch the purple lead on this main connector with the positive lead of the multimeter. And of course the multimeter is hooked to the ground. <clears throat> the, 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 the negative lead is. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch on this power supply and tell it to come on. Now let's look at the 5 volt standby voltage. With the power supply running, it's where it's supposed to be, about 5.06, 5.07. I'm going to cut the power supply off. Not the, um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out the bridge between the green and black leads, and let's watch the standby rail. 6.4. This power supply definitely has problems. It really blows my mind that this is an Antec unit. Of course, maybe it wouldn't do this with a little bit of a load on it, but as you saw, that cherry red power supply that was actually manufactured by Wintech did not do that. So I think it's probably a capacitor issue here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let the power supply sit for a couple of days and then probably tear it apart and try to recap it again. Replace some, replace some more of those Fuji capacitors. I probably should just recap the whole thing. All the secondaries. So that way, hopefully, this thing will be a little more, more reliable. So, obviously, this one here uses a two transistor style 5 volt standby rail, which I don't really like because, I mean, it's not very safe, especially when there's no protections here. That 6.4 volts, motherboard wouldn't really appreciate that. The 5.11 that this one does, whether it's, um, plugged in for a while you just plug it in it's a lot more acceptable so actually I'm going to plug this one back up and then turn it on and see what its voltage runs at okay now I have the cherry red power slide turned on now let's see what its standby rail runs when it's powered on It's kind of hard to see the multimeter, but at least I can get an angle to it. Okay, there. That's much better. Now let's go ahead and wire it up. And I notice the fan in this power supply has one of the LEDs flickering like it's going out. Anyways, let's go ahead and hook this up to the 5 volt standby rail. 5.11 volts, so the voltage is exactly the same whether whether it's turned on or not. Just powered it off. Five volt standby rail did not change at all. Anyways, I believe this power supply here may have an IC regulated five volt standby rail, which of course. This is much better than the two transistor style, and I think this one here has a two transistor style 5 volt standby circuit on it with that's regulated by a capacitor. And of course, these Antex, these older Antex having food use in them, it's not a very good combination. It's kind of like the best tech ATX 2V12V units that, were, that have killed so many e machines. Anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask.